important that the driver does a pre-trip because you're the last line of defense against this truck. When you take it out on the road, you are responsible. When you sign on that vehicle condition report that everything is satisfactory and safe, then you are the one that's going to get those tickets and you're the one that's responsible and you done took the liability off of that company and put it on you. So, pre-trip inspection, the first thing you do is you would chalk your wheels, all right? Because you don't want that truck to move forward or backward at all as you're doing your pre-trip. Mm -hmm. Then you would come up and you're going to get your key out of the ignition. All right, set it on the floor or in your pocket, either one. All right, I'm going to take it. I'm going to put mine on the floor because that's the safest place for it. Then as I'm walking forward, I'm going to re release my hood latch. Then I'm going to walk to the front of my vehicle and I'm going to stand back far enough to where I can see the clearance lights on my trailer. So, I have two clearance lights on my trailer, two clearance lights on my tractor. I have three ID lights there in the center, and my turn signals. They're all amber in color. They're not chip cracked or broken, and they are clean. Then I'm going to drop down to my headlights and my fog lights. They are clear in color, not chip cracked or broken, and they are clean. While I'm back here, I'm going to look underneath my vehicle for coolant oil or power steering. I see no leaks. All right, then I'm going to move back to my exhaust. I'm going to check it out. And as I'm moving on back, I'm going to go ahead and undo this hood latch too. Anywhere I can save a second or two is just benefiting me. All right. If I look at my exhaust, it's all self-explanatory. It's not bent, cracked, or broken. No missing nuts, bolts, U-bolts, or clamps. There's no signs of soot. Soot would indicate an exhaust leak, and I'm going to follow that all the way to my engine block. I'm going to pop this hood real quick. I'm going to take a second here and look. Now, my exhaust comes in right here to the back of this turbocharger. All right, so I'm going to make sure there's no soot up in there, too. All right, I'm going to take a quick look. I notice that my alternator here is not bent, cracked, or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. It is belt driven. My belt is not dry rock, cracked, or frayed, and no more than three quarter inch of play at the center of my belt. My electrical wires to my alternator, there's no signs of electrical damage and properly secure to my alternator. I noticed my windshield washer reservoir is here, so I want to look at it because when I get in cab, I have to demonstrate my windshield washers and I want to make sure I have fluid, so my windshield washer reservoir is not bent, cracked, or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. It's filled to the proper level. I see no leaks and my cap is intact. I notice I have all these hoses in my engine compartment. They're not dry rock, cracked, frayed, or bulging, and I hear and see no leaks. I did an overall group of hoses, so I'm going to say I hear and see no leaks. So that's all I really need to talk about on this side because I don't see my bottom radiator hose coming up here. All right, if I did see my radiator hose on this side, that would tell me right off the bat that. My water pump was on this side, but it, I notice it's over here on this side. All right, I'm gonna move on around. I like to start my pre-trip from the top and work my way to the bottom. So I notice that I have a coolant reservoir. I have a power steering reservoir, and this truck also has a hydraulic clutch reservoir. All right, they're all not bent, cracked, or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. They're all filled to the proper levels. And I see no leaks and my caps are intact. All right, then I'm gonna drop down to my oil dipstick. I'd pull it out, see if it's below the refill mark. If it is, I'd fill it through my fill tube and my fill tube is not bent, cracked, or broken and no missing nuts or bolts. Then I come on down, here's my bottom radiator hose and it runs right into my water pump here. My water pump is belt driven, driven by the same belt as my alternator. 
All right, my water pump is not bent, cracked, or broken. No missing nuts or bolts, and I see no leaks. All right, now I'm going to follow this power steering hose back, and it's going to take me right to my power steering pump. All right, my power steering pump, and this is my air compressor. They are both gear driven. They're not bent, cracked, or broken. No missing nuts or bolts, and I hear and see no leaks. Then I'm going to go to my steer, uh, steering rod, all my steering components. So I got a steering rod, I have a steering box, I have a pitman arm, I have a drag link here, and I have my steering knuckles at both ends of my drag link and my castle nut and cotter pins. They're not bent, cracked, or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, and I see no leaks at my steering box because that's the only place fluid is going to. So now I want to go to my spring mounts here in the front and the back and my U-bolts. All right, they're not bent, cracked, or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. Then I have a leaf spring. It's properly aligned. It's not bent, cracked, or broken, and I'm not missing a quarter of a leaf. If it was, I'd have to put this truck out of service. Then I have my shock absorber here. It's not bent, cracked, or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, and I see no leaks. So that's it for my suspension on here. So I'm gonna to go to my brake hose and my ABS wire. They're not dry rock cracked or frayed, and I hear no leaks. Then I have my brake chamber and locking ring. They're not bent, cracked, or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, and I hear no leaks. Now I have a slack adjuster and my push rod. They both sit at a 90 degree angle. They're not bent, cracked, or broken. My cotter pin here is intact. And if I could pull on it more than one inch would mean my brakes are out of adjustment with my brakes released. Then I'm gonna to come to my brake linings inside this brake drum. They're not dangerously thin and I see no oil or grease. Then I have my brake drum itself. It's not bent, cracked or broken. No welds other than factory and no oil or grease. All right, then I'll go to my mirror brackets on my hood and my door. Uh, I'm not going to go that far. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and get them out of the way. They're not bent, cracked, or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. All right, then I'm going to come on out to my rim. My rim is not bent, cracked, or broken. No welds other than factory. My lug nuts and studs, none of them are missing and no signs of running rust, which would indicate a loose lug nut. Then I have a valve stem here. It's not bent, cracked, or broken. My cap is intact. And I would check my tire pressure if I had a tire pressure gauge. My hub oil seal's not bent, cracked, or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. And I see no leaks. And I could always check my fluid level by pulling this cap. Come back to this tire. There's no uneven tread wear. There's no dry rock cracked or bulging on my sidewalls and no less than 430 seconds of tread depth. I notice I have a side turn signal here. It's amber in color, it's not chip cracked or broken, and it's clean. I'm gonna take my, my mirror glass and my driver's window. They're not chip cracked or broken and they are clean. I'm gonna go to my door and my door handle. It's not bent, cracked or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. My hinge and hinge pins are intact and my door opens and closes properly. My door seal is intact. It's not dry rock cracked or missing. I notice I have a fire extinguisher here. All right, it's properly secure and fully charged. All right, now I'll go down to this battery box here. My battery box is not bent, cracked or broken. No missing nuts or bolts the wires to my batteries, all right? No signs of electrical damage and properly secure, all right? Then I have my steps and my catwalk. They're not bent, cracked, or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, and free of debris. My storage box has three reflective triangles, spare fuses, and circuit breakers. Now I'm gonna Take my DEF tank. It's not bent, cracked, or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. I see no leaks and my cap is intact. My fuel tank, strap and cap. All right. 
My fuel tank, there's no holes, no cracks, and I see no leaks. My strap is not bent, cracked, or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, and there's no signs of shiny metal, which would indicate a looser shifting tank. My cap is intact, and I see no leaks. Now I'm gonna take my air lines and my power cord. They're not twisted, tangled, or pinched. They are not dragging against my catwalk or the frame of my tractor. Now I'm gonna split them up. My air lines, they're not dry rock, crack, frayed, or bulging, and I hear no leaks. They are properly secured to my truck and my trailer. All right, my glad hands are not bent, cracked, or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. They are properly secured to my trailer and my rubber grommets inside the glad hand is not dry rock, cracked, frayed, or missing. And I hear no leaks. All right, my power cord. There's no signs of electrical damage, properly secured to my truck and my trailer. My electrical sockets on my truck and my trailer, they're not bent, cracked, or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, no signs of electrical damage. Then I'll go to my frame and cross members. They're not bent, cracked, or broken. There are no holes or welds other than factory and no broken welds. I have a drive shaft down here that's properly aligned and not twisted. Then I have U-joints at both ends of that drive shaft, properly lubricated and no excessive wear. I notice I have a torsion bar running across here on this rear end as part of my suspension, so it's not bent, cracked, or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. I have air lines coming down to my brake chambers here. All right, air lines are not dry, rock, crack, frayed, or bulging, and I hear no leaks. My brake chamber and locking rings are not bent, cracked, or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, and I hear no leaks. Again, I have slack adjusters and push rods. They both sit at a 90 degree angle. They're not bent, cracked, or broken. My cotter pins are intact. And if I could pull on them more than one inch would mean my brakes are out of adjustment. Then I'll go to my brake linings, not dangerously thin and no oil or grease. Then I have a brake drum again. It's not bent, cracked, or broken. No welds other than factory and no oil or grease. Now I have an inner and outer rim. All right, they're properly spaced and no debris. The condition of my rims are not bent, cracked, or broken, no welds other than factory. Then I have my valve stems, they're not bent, cracked, or broken. Caps are intact, and I would check my tire pressure if I had my tire pressure gauge. Lug nuts and studs, none of them are missing, no signs of running rust, which would act, would let me know if I had a loose lug nut. Axle seals, not bent, cracked, or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, and I see no leaks. Now I'm gonna come back to these tires, inner and outer tires. There's no uneven tread wear, no dry rock cracked or bulge into my sidewalls, and no less than 230 seconds of tread depth. Then I'm gonna come back to my leaf spring mounts and U-bolts again. They're not bent, cracked, or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. My leaf spring is properly aligned. It's not bent, cracked, or broken. And I'm not missing more than a quarter of a leaf because I would put this truck out of service. My shock absorber right here. It's not bent, cracked, or broken. No missing nuts or bolts, and I see no leaks. I have my airbag mounts. Top and bottom are not bent, cracked, or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. My airbag is not dry, rock, cracked, frayed, or bulging, and I hear no leaks. I would inspect this axle the same as I did this axle here. All right, now I'll come back up to my trailer face and header board. Trailer face and header board. It's not been cracked or broken. There's no holes, no cracks, no missing rivets. Then I'll do my trailer side again. There's no holes, no cracks, no missing rivets. And my DOT tape runs the full length of my trailer and it is not peeling or missing. Then I'm gonna come up under here for my coupling. All right, so I have my apron and my skid plate. There's no space between my apron and skid plate. My skid plate is properly lubricated. 
My pivot pin is intact, secured by a nut and bolt. Then I'll go to my platform, it's not been cracked or broken, and all mounting hardware is in place. Then I have a fifth wheel release arm up here. It's in the locked position. All right, then I'll come down to my locking, sliding fifth wheel locking pins. They're in the locked position, right? They're locked into position so I have proper clearance between my tractor and the landing gear on my trailer while making turns. Then I have my cross members and frame of my trailer. They're not bent, cracked, or broken. There's no missing rivets, no missing nuts, bolts, no broken welds, and there's no holes in my floor that could damage my freight. Then I have my uh, mud flap and splash guards. They're not bent, cracked, or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. And I have DOT tape that runs the full length of my mud flap and it's not peeling or missing. Then I'm gonna get up under here All right, my locking jaw is locked around the shank of my kingpin and not the head, and my kingpin has not been cracked or broken. Now I have tail lights and reflectors. My tail lights and reflectors are red in color, and not tip cracked or broken, and they are clean. And most trucks have a reverse light. This one here does not, but hey, my reverse light is clear in color, not tip cracked or broken, and it is clean. Then I'm gonna look at my landing gear. My landing gear's not been cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. My landing gear legs would be in the upright position, my feet would be clear of debris, and my crank handle's properly stowed away. Just remember these little squares right here, running down here, gonna remind you of your cross members and frame on your trailer. All right, here I have a turn signal and a marker light. And this is my reflector. So this is a two-in-one light and a reflector. It's amber in color. It's not chip cracked or broken, and it's clean. This here is a California skirt, they call it. It's not been cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. All right, now I'm going to look up under here and see what type trailer I have. I have a square box here, so that's automatically going to tell me that this is an air ride trailer because this is a torque mount and this is where my torque arm is. There's nut and bolt and washers holding my torque arm in there. All right, can we get a shot on this trailer right here? Because if you see a mount that looks like this, looks like a comma, looks like a comma that's telling you that this is a leaf spring trailer right off the bat. All right, so if I say my shock absorber and I'm inspecting a leaf spring trailer, I just got a zero. All right, because leaf spring trailers do not have shocks and they do not have airbags. So let's get back over here to what we are inspecting today. So I have a torque mount and a torque arm. It's not been cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, okay? Then I have a sliding tandem release valve here. All right, it's in the locked position and my locking pins are coming through, so that means they are in a lock position. Then, since this is air rod, I know I have a shock absorber in there. It's not been cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, and I see no leaks. I have airbag mounts, top and bottom, they're not been cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts. I have an airbag under here, right? It's not dry rock, crack, freight, or bulging, and I hear no leaks. Then I have brake hoses again. They're not dry rock, crack, freight, or bulging, and I hear no leaks. I have brake chambers and locking rings. They're not been cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, and I hear no leaks. My slack adjusters and push rods both sit at a 90 degree angle. They're not been cracked or broken. My cotter pins are intact, and if I could pull on it more than one inch would mean my brakes are out of adjustment with my brakes released. All right, then I'll move on out to my brake linings again. They're not dangerously thin, no oil or grease. Then my brake drum is not bent, cracked, or broken. No welds other than factory and no oil or grease. Then I'll come to my rims, inner and outer rim, properly spaced and no debris. And then the condition of my rims are not bent, cracked, or broken. No welds other than factory. Then I have my valve stems again. 
They're not bent, cracked, or broken. My caps are intact, and I would check my tire pressure if I had a tire pressure gauge. My lug nuts and studs, none of them are missing and no signs of running rust, which would indicate a loose lug nut. Now I have a hub oil seal. It's not been cracked or broken, no missing nuts or bolts, and I see no leaks. And I could always check my fluid level by pulling that cap. <coughs> I'm gonna come back, excuse me, I'm gonna come back to my tires, inner and outer tires. There's no uneven tread wear on the surface, no dry rock cracked or bulging of my sidewalls, and no less than two thirty seconds of tread depth. I would inspect this axle the same as I did this axle. Then I have a mud flap again. It's not been cracked or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. Then I have an ABS light. It's amber in color. It's not chip cracked or broken and it's clean. This light here is a warning to the driver. If this light is on, that means this trailer has the capability of locking up on you when you hit those brakes. All right. So now I'm going to take this red marker light and I'm going to move it around back with all my other tail lights. So I have a red marker light. I have two clearance lights, three ID lights, and my tail lights. They're all red in color. They're not chip cracked or broken and they are clean. Now I'm going to talk about my door. I got a door. I have a door handle. I have a door latch and my hinges, right? They're not bent, cracked or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. My cables for this roll-up door, they are not frayed, broken, or missing. Then I'm going to drop down here. I notice on my door I have DOT tape. It runs the full length of my door, and it's not uh, peeling or missing. Then I'm going to drop down to my DOT bumper. It's not bent, cracked, or broken. No missing nuts or bolts. And my DOT tape runs the full length of my bumper, and it's not peeling or missing. All right, I have a tag light back here. It's clear in color. It's not chip cracked or broken, and it's clean. And my license plate is properly secured to the trailer. I would inspect this right side the same as I did the left. Would you please come join me for my end cab inspection? All right. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my key. I'm going to enter my vehicle with three points of contact. Three points of contact is two feet in one hand or two hands and a foot. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my seat and my mirrors for me. All right, so the way you adjust your seat is you get in and you push on that clutch. You want to be on your toes when you're all the way to the floor with that clutch. All right, I'm going to put my key in the ignition. But I'm not going to turn it because I'll adjust my mirrors after I do my safe start because they're electric mirrors. So I'm going to get my seatbelt out. My seatbelt is not dry, rock, cracked, or frayed. No missing nuts or bolts. And it latches properly. Now I'd like to conduct a safe start. So a safe start would be clutch in. My truck is in neutral. My brakes are set. And I'm gonna start my engine. Well, first I'm gonna turn it one click and my ABS light should come on and go right back off. All right, and it did. My gauges have cycled. Now I'm ready to start her up. I'm going to wiggle this stick, make sure I'm in neutral as I'm letting this clutch out. So as a truck driver, the first thing I want to look at would be my oil gauge here. It came up to the proper pressure within seconds of starting my engine. My next gauge would be my temperature gauge. It's building to the proper temperature and it's not overheating. My next gauge I'm going to look at is my voltmeter. It's charging between 12 and 14 volts. All right, I notice I have DEF 
I have four bars across the butter bar, my DEF fluid. They are green lights and I have plenty of DEF fluid. Then I'm gonna come down to my air gauges and they're building between 100 and 125 PSI. All right. Then I'm gonna check my lights within my dash. So that would be my left turn signal, my right turn signal, my four-way flashers, and my high beam indicator light. All right. Now I'm gonna do my test my city horn and my highway horn. Okay. All right, they are both functioning. Now I'm going to talk about my windshield. My windshield's not chip cracked or broken and it's clean. My windshield seal is not dry rock cracked and I see no leaks. I have no obstructions on my dash. My windshield wipers, all right, are not bent cracked or broken. No missing nuts or bolts and they are functioning properly. You can talk about those wiper blades. They're not dry rock cracked or missing. Then I'm going to test my windshield washer fluid. All right, windshield washer fluid is functioning properly also. So now I'm going to test my defrost and my heat. So I'm going to turn this over to defrost. Fill up here. Yeah. Air is blowing out. Then I'm going to turn it to heat. And down there, air is coming out. Perfect. All right, now I like to conduct a tug test. All right, a tug test is testing my trailer brakes and my tractor brakes. Remember, there's no certain order, but I have to test both of them. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put my truck in gear. Then, to test my trailer, I'm gonna push in my tractor brakes. That'd be yellow. All right. Then I'm gonna let out on my clutch just slowly until I feel a little resistance. Right there is a little resistance and my trailer brakes are holding. So I'm gonna set my tractor and release my trailer and I'm gonna do the same thing over again. I'm gonna let my clutch out slowly so I feel a little resistance there. Right there she is, she's pulling. All right, so now I'm gonna set my trailer brake. I'm going to pop my truck back in neutral and I'm going to let my air pressure build back to the maximum PSI of 100 and 125. I'm going to get my timer out because I need my timer for the air leakage test. Stop what? Then to speed up your air compressor a little bit, you can always tell your tester, ask your tester, can I give it some RPMs to help my air compressor build? Whenever the truck discharges air, that's the maximum PSI that it's gonna build. It's called the governor's shutoff. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my clutch in, truck back in gear. I'm going to reach down here and I'm going to turn my engine off. I'm going to let my clutch out. Then I'm going to turn my key back to the on position without starting the vehicle. All right, then I'm going to release my brakes. I'm gonna let my air stabilize. Give it four to six seconds there to stabilize. Now I'm gonna put my foot on the brake pedal for one minute. I'm gonna time it for one minute. And remember, don't smash it hard because if you smash it hard, you're gonna be leaking out 
past the valves, the little rubber gaskets and all. So just push steady, make sure you just push enough to where those gauges aren't moving. I'm going to let off, tell them I lost no more than 4 PSI within that minute. Now I'm going to fan my brakes. I'm going to fan my brakes to 60. My warning light and buzzer should come on. There they go. Now I'm going to fan between 40 and 20 PSI and my brakes should release all by themselves. So they both should have popped out. They probably popped out real slow, but I'm not going to check them until I ask for a safe restart. So I'd like to have a safe restart. So it's clutch in, truck back in neutral. I'm going to verify that my brakes are set. Then I'm going to start my engine. Then I'm going to bring my air pressure back up to 60 PSI. At that point there, I've showed the, the tester that I have went through all my fail-safe equipment and it is working, operating, functioning properly. So I'm going to give a little bit of RPMs to help speed up the process. Alright, my truck has reached 60 PSI. My warning light and buzzers have gone off. So right then and there, I've done showed them that all my fail safe equipment is working. So now what I would do is I would get out and remove my wheel chocks. I'd ask the tester, I'm going to get out, remove my wheel chocks because I have one more brake test to do. And that would be my service brake test. So I'm just going to narrate that because we don't have enough room here to actually do a service brake test. So service brake test is I'd put my truck in gear, I'd travel, release my brakes, I'd travel three to five miles per hour, clutch and brake at the same time, my truck should stop and not pull left or right. Right then and there, I'd say that completes my pre-trip inspection. Will you please get out and assist me with my lights? And then of course, my lights on the front end, I'm gonna give him all my lights. Then I'm going to give him left turn signal, right turn signal. I'm going to give him a high beam indicator. All right. Then four way flashers. Then he's going to go to the back of the trailer. I'm going to give him brake lights, left right turn signal, and four way flashers. And all my other lights will already be on. 
So that would be the end of my pre-trip inspection.